Hey, fellow filmmaker. Wait. This this looks terrible. Hold on, I'm just gonna um just real quick. There we go. Much better. Hey, fellow filmmakers. Clifton Stommel here. I just wanted to say initially a great big thank you to everybody who checked out my short film Spring Cleaning, as well as a super special thanks to Valentina V for stopping by, doing some interviews, checking out what I do here at the house, as well as a huge, huge thanks to Aperture for your support as well in making that short film and making this wonderful little light that I'll be reviewing here today. So if you guys are here to check out the MT Pro review, we're going to get right to that. If you haven't had a chance to check out my short film, go ahead and hop over there. The link will be in the description below as well as somewhere here is a pop up on the screen YouTube interface thing. But uh, after you guys check that out, come right back and we'll get to it. And of course, the reason you've come here today is this, the Aperture MT Pro. Their one foot magnetic mountable, metal bodied, bicolor, full RGB, programmable pixel effects, wireless Bluetooth mesh connectable via Citus Link, Lumen Radio wireless CR mix controllable, very versatile, super mobile light. Now, did I miss something? Probably. This thing has a crazy number of features, but let's start with the basics. All the bells and whistles aside, how does the MT Pro perform as just a light? Well, to start, we have full brightness control from 0 to 100% in 0.1% increments, which is shockingly fine-tuned for a 7.5 watt light. And on the CCT mode, which stands for Controlled Color Temperature, for those of you who don't know, this will range from 2000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin in the standard mode. When you switch it into expanded CCT mode, it will go all the way from 1500 to 20,000 Kelvin, which is amazingly broad of a range. And of course, my very favorite feature of any bicolor light that has an RGB option as well is the green magenta shift. To match the available light in an area you may be filming at with say, crappy compact fluorescent bulbs that are a little bit pink or those terrible, terrible mercury vapor bulbs in a, say, a gymnasium, which are super green and don't do anyone's skin tone any favors, this will allow you to shift the green and magenta side of this to allow you to match those available light sources. And from there, it's just on the colorist to make sure that the grade comes out right. And speaking of an RGB mix, this is a full RGB light. In the HSI mode, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Intensity, intensity, i.e. brightness, you have full control over just how much saturation and light you want to get out of this, and that can go a long way in your film. Granted, not every film has to look like the Neon Demon, but pretty much every film can benefit from a little color splash here and there, or a little chroma contrast that you build on site, which again, your colorist can push even further, like in this environment. And when it comes to the build quality of the MT Pro, it's just robust and straightforward. There's really no reason to complicate a one foot light and they didn't unnecessarily complicate it. Everything on this that can be made of metal is made of metal. And of course we have our quarter 20 threads on bottom as well as halfway up the side for mounting hot dog or hamburger orientation, and a pair of very strong magnets that do a great job attaching this light in all sorts of precarious places you'd otherwise have a hard time mounting lights. It has a super clearly legible backlit display that shows you exactly how much time you have left on the battery depending on how bright you have the light set. So when you crank the light brightness up, you will actually see the time remaining go down, which is a really valuable feature. So it's not just sort of translating a percentage to a generic amount of time left, it's actually telling you based on the current settings, this is how long the light will last. The MT Pro comes in a protective semi soft case or semi hard case that has a little rubberized handle here. And inside of which comes a little tabletop tripod stand thing. Uh, this is a pretty cool sort of freebie that they throw in. I will say, well, this is a great option to just sort of toss the light up onto a stand if you wanna throw it on a table, just sort of real quick to throw up vertically or horizontally. Uh, one of the things I was excited about using this for was actually as a handle unit. It even has these little grooves that are kind of ergonomically sort of nice to hold, but the tightening mechanism, no matter how hard you tighten it, and I mean like really go to town, if you're carrying it around and you suddenly have to change directions, that head doesn't really hold. So it's worth noting that if you're going to actually use this as a handle and not just as a tabletop tripod for the light, you'll wanna pick up a more robust one. 
And I'll share some links in the description below for accessories and things that I would recommend getting for this light or really any other handheld unit that you might be messing with. Moving on, inside the box is also this super cool snap grid. Thank goodness for this. Aperture, I'm so glad that you made this, that you threw this in here. This object makes this light so much more useful and versatile. Um, Aperture's diffusion on their tube lights from the Ameren T2, T4 series, uh, and including the MT Pro, is such good diffusion, but it does create a lot of spill, just a lot of spread of light, which is a great thing when you want to use it to cast a great broad light with a nice reflection in your subject, like we have here, a four foot tube that I'm shooting with right now. The only problem that creates is when you do want to control the light, you do need some sort of way to channel that light to a source so you can get a nice rim without so much spill in the room or whatever you're using it for. I do wish that every single tube light of every length came with these because I find myself constantly making these sort of barn doors out of gaff tape on every tube light I've ever worked with that doesn't come with a snap grid. So big up to Aperture for including the snap grid on this thing. Really hope that they create one of these for the other tube lights that they have, uh, the T2C and the T4C, uh, because I'll be picking up a bunch of those snap grids in a heartbeat. Well, this is a great case for protecting a single light and amazing that they ship it in something like this. They really didn't need to get you something that's this robust and this protective. I will certainly be making myself uh, a four to six light pack of some kind where I can put all my lights safely into a single box to transport to and fro. A light like this is really great, but it really functions even better when you have like a set of them. So I'll be losing this, but if you only have one or two, awesome case to keep it in. Now what really makes the MT Pro shine are the pixels. This thing has 36 pixels in a one foot tube. What this means for you is that when you do the pixel motion effects, that you'll have less stutter and much more smooth, sort of seamless way that the light appears to move organically. This is great for when you're doing effects like in my short film, Spring Cleaning, or if you even wanna have this thing just sort of appear to be a light moving on a rail, you can have that effect where your shadows and your incidental lighting change throughout the environment because of how this light moves. This is an amazing tool to have and the number of pixels really gives you a ton of fine control. And of course, in terms of the standard effects, everything you'd expect to be here is here. Cop car, party mode, lightning flashes, so on and so forth. And a few of sort of apertures specific ones that aren't on every single other light you'd see, like faulty bulb is a particular favorite of mine. Of course, when you're using the Cytus Link app, you have a lot more control over how these different effects function and work. For example, the lightning, you get to choose how many strikes go off and exactly when you want to trigger the effect. And you can repeatedly trigger to get an initial number of strikes you want and then let it roll out for the rest of the effect. And I'm just gonna say it right now at this point, guys, if you have Aperture Lights and you are not using the Cytus Link app, you are f***ing up. There's no other way to say it. These lights are great. The quality of the output is good, and yes, you can dial in most, if not all, the effects physically on the light. However, with other lights like the Aperture Amaran 200D, you get access to those effects in Cytus Link. I mean, right now, seriously, if you guys, are, if you guys have Aperture Lights and you've not downloaded the app, go download it. Go down, go, just go. I'll wait, I'll wait. It's cool. Okay, so this is not gonna turn into a Cytus Link video, of course. We only have a limited amount of time and this is the lad I'm focusing on. If you guys would like to see me do an entire Cytus Link breakdown video and or tutorial slash guide slash how to, a workflow walkthrough, if you will, let me know in the comment section below and I will do that for you. So what do I think this light is perfect for? This one foot light does a great job of accomplishing quite a bit more than the MC could without being such a large form factor of a two foot light. Now, is this a key light? No, it's only a 7.5 watt light and it has a really, really good diffusion on it. So it's not gonna be a punchy, punchy source as a key light unless you're doing some sort of super fast glass, super low light, you know, supplementing with moonlight kind of thing, shooting on a high ISO sensitivity camera, which you could do, but this isn't designed, I think, to be a key light. This is a really good supplemental light, fill light, rim light, eye catch light, or even, of course, small lighted effects, miniature setups, uh, using within lighted props, or having it even be a light as a physical object in space. 
A few of my short films have already done this, and I intend to do it more. Tube lights make such great lighted objects and design elements in a space just as they are. So what would I have liked to have seen different or added to this light? I would have loved to have seen wireless charging on this product. You guys already have it on the MC. It's pretty much a game changer. And your little multi-light case, the four and the 12 pack, where you can just drop the light on it, it magnetically snaps into place and starts charging. That's such a cool feature. And admittedly, as soon as I got my hands on this, I did take it to my various wireless charging stations and devices, and I checked to see, I slid it kind of all over the object and saw whether or not it would do any wireless charging. And it didn't. Speaking of wireless charging features, I also would have liked to have seen maybe a multi-light case with this particular product. Again, this is a light of a certain size that I think it's totally worth owning four or six or maybe even 12 if you're feeling particularly ambitious of this particular unit. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that they can't still create a charging case for these lights because they do have on the end the USB-C and they could easily drop in and it's like, like so into a bunch of slots. All in all, is it a worthwhile light? Yeah, honestly, this is a crazy light. I'm amazed at what it can accomplish in such a small body, the number of features that it has, but the controllability, the functionality, the versatility of this light has honestly just impressed the hell out of me. And every time that I've told someone about it or showed someone this light on set, and they say, okay, how much is it? Again, around the $200 price point is just such a reasonable amount for a light that does everything this light does. Granted, it is the same price about as the T2C, which is a much bigger light that's a much punchier source, but it doesn't have nearly as many pro features like individual pixel control as this light does. And honestly, I'm personally gonna pick up five to six light kit of this particular unit, and this is for sure going in my permanent collection. Once again, thank you guys so much for coming out and checking out the videos that I make here on this channel. If you guys appreciated what you saw here, if this helped you make any decisions or give you any additional insight on this light, of course, please give me a subscribe, hit the little notification bell thing so you can see when I upload new videos. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you would like me to make the Sidus video or a different uh, workflow walkthrough, please leave it in the comment section below. Love you guys' feedback every time just I love the love that happens on this channel, and as you know, I'm a real person and I'm here, and I will continue commenting and reacting and responding to every single comment on my channel, because I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.